And joining me here is the stuntsman, Mr. Peter Kent. How are you, Peter? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Doing well. Tell me a little bit, what brings you to Vaughn? Um, I'm here to teach a seminar to uh, prospective um, stunt people uh, or actors that just want a little bit more experience in the stunt field. Uh, so we're doing a little flying by wire, some fight choreography and uh, a little bit of weapons training. Perfect, perfect. And tell me a little more about your journey as a stuntsman. You worked with Arnold Schwarzenegger for 15 years. How was that? It was awful, awful. No, uh, it, it had its moments. I mean, uh, you know, you, um, you can imagine like for 15 films and some of the biggest action pictures, uh, you know, you had some, some days that were pretty hard to get up and uh, come back to work the next day. Um, but all in all, it was great. It was a lot of fun. We were on the road quite a bit. I think most of those 15 years we were probably, uh, you know, each film is six months. An action picture runs about six months to shoot. So uh, half the year I was away someplace like Mexico City or, uh, or um, uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico or all of these different locations. Um, and then you look at a movie like Terminator 2, which is extremely uh, tough, especially on somebody like me doing all the gags for him. Um, so, you know, those, those movies, at, at the end of that film, I think I probably slept for about a week and a half. Congratulations, by the way. I read in 2009, you were inducted as Hollywood Stuntsman. How did you feel being recognized for all your great work? Um, yeah, they put, I got inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2009, you're right. Uh, it's, it's pretty awesome when you consider some of the names that are in there, like, uh, well, Yakima Kanat, who's probably the grandfather of all stuntmen. Uh, who was John Wayne's double uh, in um, Stagecoach and many other movies. Um, so it's a real honor to be in there. There's some, uh, some of my friends and some of my peers that I've, I've worked with over the years that I have a great deal of respect for uh, are in there too. So it's, uh, it's pretty amazing, yeah. That's fantastic. Now I'm really excited about today because you're providing two seminars, intensive seminars, to all these people that actually want to take this as a profession or even perhaps put this on a bucket list. What can we expect for today? Um, well, it's a pretty intense workout as far as the fight choreography goes. Uh, it may seem to drag on a little bit, but uh, learning it by the numbers is very important because uh, when the camera's rolling, you don't want to mess it up too much. The director doesn't like that. Uh, and then we go into some wire work. We're going to use a harness on the floor there and, and pick people up off the floor and sort of Peter Pan them across the room. Uh, and that's sort of pre to prepare you for, uh, for that type of work and give you an idea of what it feels like to be in a vest and be picked up and flown and then also some weapons training uh, because nothing irks me more than to see people on a cop show walking around holding their weapons stupidly uh, and uh, some directors don't really care about it but a lot of people like myself it really annoys so we're gonna fix that. Of course, of course and tell me what's the craziest stunt you've ever done throughout your career? Twins, I have twin boys. <laughs> Congratulations by the way. Uh, they're four years old, yeah. Um, actually, um, I don't know, it's hard to say. I, I mean, I've done, I've gone 20 stories off the side of a building on a wire on my back. Uh, the truck transfer in Terminator 2 uh, between the, the little truck and the big rig, James Cameron said was far too dangerous to even ever consider doing again. Mind you, he did put me in harm's way the first time. Uh, and then, um, you know, the helicopter stuff in True Lies. So it's hard to say which one was, uh, they're all different in their own way. And each one has its own element of danger. Um, you just sort of have to really stay focused and, and pay attention to what's going on. A lot, of, a lot of guys that I know will go out and just say, okay, is it ready now? Hook me up, I'm ready to go. I never did that. I always stood on set and paid attention to what the rigging was, paid attention to how things were being set up, uh, because basically it's self-preservation. Of course, of course. Now you talked about you know, Mr. James Cameron, another Canuck. He's an amazing talent and a great director. How was it working with him? Like, how was it getting a mentor through with him and, and getting all the mentorship from Arnold Schwarzenegger? Tell me a little more about that. Um, well, a lot of people find James Cameron difficult to work with. Um, uh, mind you, he didn't get that reputation until later on in his career. I would say after Abyss that he was difficult. Of course, Abyss was a very stressful situation. Uh, I know James personally spent like days underwater. He lived in a in a basically a hyperbaric chamber because he didn't want to have to come up and decompress to go back down again. It was just it wasted too much time. Um, he can be difficult. Some actors refuse to work with him. I had a great time with him because I met him on Terminator when he had no attitude. And being fellow Canadians, we got along seemingly better than most people did. Uh, and we joked a lot and, and stuff like that. So when it came time to do Terminator, um, some people were afraid of him. He would, 
he's one of those kind of guys that will, if he can get you on the run, he'll keep you on the run, but I would just never put up with that. I'd just use the F word and say, yeah, F you, Jim. I don't think, it, you know, whatever. I just wouldn't take it from him, and he'd just shrug his shoulders and go, ah, and walk away. Um, so I, I actually had a great working relationship with him. Um, working with Arnold was the same thing. I mean, we were you know, pretty much 24-7 for 15 years. I would cook with the guy, work out with him, uh, read scripts with him. That, I mean, I drew the line at, at sleeping with the house staff, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, so I was around with him all the time. And some of the other great directors, like Walter Hill, uh, 48 Hours and, uh, and The Long Riders. The beauty of, of that for me was what I learned from those guys as opposed to sitting in my trailer and just going, okay, am I ready to come out now? I would spend the time on set, watch what kind of lenses are being used, watch what kind of lighting's going on, watch how set things are being set up. So you learn a lot that way. So Mr. Cameron took you under his wing back when you went to LA. What can you give, what kind of advice would you give to a young you know, actor, writer, st aspiring stuntsman? Well, my situation was so uniquely different than anybody else's, it would never happen again. Um, I think that door opened and closed in about a heartbeat. So, um, but I'd have to say, you know, learn your craft, no matter what it is, whether it's acting, directing, screenwriting, whatever, learn it to your, the best of your ability. You have to be passionate about it. You can't dabble in it. Uh, it it's just like, you know, it's all or nothing, really. Uh, and the industry is a very difficult industry. It's very um, cyclic. I mean, BC is slow right now. Toronto's kicking. Um, LA is slow right now, Atlanta's kicking, so you have to be prepared to move around with it. And you also need to diversify. If you're going to just try and survive as being an actor, you probably won't. If you're going to try and survive as being a stunt person, you probably won't. And of course, that's part of the reason I teach this class, is to meld those two things together, to be an actor-stunt person, because then you have a higher chance of working. Um, and you know, if you're interested in the production side, learn about directing. Uh, learn about the screenwriting process and how, how to create a good story. Um, learn about those things. Uh, otherwise, get a bank job. So what are we doing right now? Just putting the vest on your flying vest and uh, getting it cinched down. These are vests are custom made by Amspec and uh, they are about $1,100 a piece. And this is what you would use for doing a, what's called a ratchet pull or for flying, uh, any kind of flying system. Like in Spider-Man, all that stuff, Matrix, all this stuff, where they use vests like this. Or similar to it. Some of them have a cuff on your leg to mm -hmm. allow you to lay out flat in it and spread your weight out more. Okay. Anything where you're doing high work, you have a vest on because you're clipped into a wire system, either for safety, um, just in case you fall to catch you, right. or if you're flying on a wire in, in, in whatever case. Like on the last action here, I went 20 stories down the side of a hotel. On, a, on a, what's called a descender wire, right. uh, and so for that they just put a, they just clip on to the very top of the back because they want you to fall just like a body would fall straight down in a pendulum. Mm -hmm. um, if they want you to lay out flatter, then the pick, as they call it, the wire attaches lower in your back, so then it tilts you out more. So these vests allow you to be picked from anywhere, even on the sides. If you're going to do a run across the wall, then you pick it on the side. For more information, where can we find uh, your school now? I understand you're in Vancouver and you're going to be coming to Toronto, is that correct? You're letting the cat out of the bag. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, we're, we're working on that. I won't, I won't say yes or no yet, but we're, we're working on that. Um, but you can find me in the meantime at peterhkent.com or on Facebook at Peter Kent School of Hard Knocks. Thank you very much, Peter, for your time. You're welcome.